What's up, everybody? On this episode of Inside the Pocket, we got some info on a staycation that Austin and I will be doing and some other stuff that we've been up to in the past week and weeks to come. Some NFL stories. We touch on some NHL. We got a wow story of the week. If I were president, our conspiracy theories, and some tender talks. And, of course, a beer review. Let's go. To inside the pocket, this is Austin Robinson, and with me, as always, is Gavin Robinson. What up? Cause... I hope everybody is having a fantastic Saturday, Friday, or Sunday. Whenever you happen to be listening to it, whatever day of the week is, I hope you've had a great time since the last time we talked to you. Absolutely. And if not, stop making bad decisions and improve your life. You know, everybody can always improve on what they're doing on a daily basis, just by, in my opinion, having a couple of drinks. Cuz. Mm. Let's so, fucking go. I think one of my dogs just died. Huh? Uh, so, what have you been up to these past couple weeks? or what are, what These couple days? Yeah, past was... week? Past week was pretty good. You know, just hanging at home. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Having a few drinky drinks here and there. You've entered a new relationship. I did enter a new relationship. I didn't know if that was something I wanted to get onto the podcast. Like, you know. like. But I just went ahead and put it on there. All right, floor. well, you did it for me. Yep, Austin... No longer single. Off the market, your value has gone up, but your availability has gone drastically down. So, so how, how is it, cool girl? Yeah, you haven't yeah. met her yet. I know it's really not official yet. You can put whatever you want on Facebook, but until I meet this bitch, I feel like I have a pretty drastic uh, determining factor on whether or not. That's fair. Yeah, I, I'd put that on a. Like key if as I well. dated a chick and you were straight up like, "Yo, dude, this bitch has got to go," I'd probably be like, "Yo, you gotta go." My brother's not going to have me around. you got to go. Yeah, it would be a struggling factor. But I think you'll like her. I think it'll be a good time whenever we finally get all of us together. I think you guys will enjoy her. Well, uh, mystery girl, until we meet, thank you for taking care of my brother's penis. And <laughs> okay. we will meet in the future. Uh, one cool thing that we got coming up is we're doing a little staycation. Yes, we are. Weeks. We're going to be hitting up a concert, the last Warp Tour is going through the states right now. Should we wear our shirts to that? I think we should. That'd be you a great idea. think we should idea. wear our shirts For to that? For sure. And then just tell people, yo, follow this. We're going to talk about some shit. Maybe we'll even meet some bands and make a connection. Be like, yo, we got a new podcast coming out. Can I get a contact from you and do an interview with you? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, we should probably sure. do that. So we're going to do that. So look forward to that. And then we are also, one of the days, we are probably going to go to a movie theater and just watch all the movies. Yep, a full day. We're just going to go in at whenever we decide to wake up. We're going to head to that movie theater, watch a movie, walk out, buy a ticket, get some drink drinks. I'm probably going to load up my car with a couple things of liquor and a yeah. flask. And, and even if we like... Some of them, we may have some time where we can, like, leave and go get some drinks and sneak them back in. Yeah. And then, uh, also, we are probably going to go play my first game of golf. Yeah. And maybe hit up a buddy of the podcast Lunchbox and play some disc golf. Yeah, those will be And then just a week of some fun shit that we'll be doing, and hopefully we can create some content, and that'll be some fun stuff to talk about with you guys. I'm excited to see you just pitch away at some dirt for a while on your first round of golf. I have a feeling I'm going to struggle. Yeah, you're going to. And I have a feeling I'm going to get pretty mad, maybe fight you. I think we'll be okay, especially because we'll have drinks. This is what we're going to do again. We're going to go to Pheasant Run. That's going to be your first course. Okay. Keep that in mind. No free ads. Yeah, no free ads. We're going to Pheasant Run. We're going to buy a 30. We're gonna keep the thirty in the car. We're gonna run a golf cart, and we're just gonna have a day. We're gonna have a day. Beer per hole. Okay. There's eighteen holes, so really we should have. When we're done determining how 30. frustrated I am, we'll hit some mini putt after that. Yeah, we'll figure just it keep out. It going. We'll figure it out. We'll probably hit a driving range beforehand to get you know the night, the clubs all warmed up for sure. Uh, anything else you got going on? One thing I just revamped my whole Twitch page. Uh, updated a little bit with stuff like that so if you're into video games and you want to check it out twitch.tv slash gd underscore live 
Uh, I don't stream a lot, but I am going to try, especially once we start doing the podcast a lot more. I would love to play some games with some listeners, or even if I'm not playing with you, if you want to just come stare at my beard and watch me get fucking pissed off at video games while being okay at them, be sure and check it out. You can probably see me on there sometimes, or hear me. Yeah, you'll at least be able to hear you. Yeah. Uh, but... Is that all you really got for weekly updates? Uh, I do have to say that we got to work together last week. Yeah, that was pretty good. And we're actually going to work with each other next week. Yeah, in the fucking ghetto. So now that we're both there, I hope nobody decides to try anything because... We got heat. We got heat. (laughs) One thing I'm not afraid to make known is I carry guns with me everywhere I go. So don't fucks with us. Yep, talking about relationships. That's why my last one ended. I bought an assault rifle. Which is wild. Like, to literally have a two, almost three-year relationship end because somebody wanted a gun that, obviously, you've had guns up till then, and none of them have harmed the family, and you actually had an incident where they wanted you to get the gun because they feared for their life. As a breakdown, so we thought somebody had broken into the house, and I was told to get my guns and storm the house, and I did. No one was there. It was actually the dog had unlocked her crate and got out when we weren't ready for it, and it was scary because it was at, like, 4 in the morning. So, yeah. But I ended up buying an assault rifle later on, and that was a no-go, apparently, and that ended. So, I still have the gun. On to bigger and better things. Still got the guns, though. A gun's never going to wake up in the morning and tell you it doesn't love you anymore. Exactly. So, uh, also, another fun thing is we really noticed, so we live in St. Louis. A lot of you that listen are local, but if you happen to be outside the area, St. Louis is commonly known as a very dangerous place in some parts of the city and we are working in one of those parts of the city where uh it's very unsafe kind of sketchy you gotta have your wits about you but it is very crazy how you'll be driving along we went from one job to the other uh on friday literally a 12 minute drive yeah a 12 minute drive and literally i even asked austin after it happened There's literally a point where you cross, you will just cross a street, and all of a sudden it goes from, like, abandoned buildings and trap houses and sketchy as shit, abandoned cars on the street. Yards overgrown with shit in the yards, and then the next street over. Literally beautiful buildings with, like, fancy, like, wine and cheese restaurants and expensive hospital buildings and everything else. It's just crazy how drastically, like, one or two blocks can change where you're at in the city. So it was kind of wild. But let's look into some NFL. Yeah, let me go ahead and Uh, pop this one off. Okay. I thought you were going to pause us there for a second, but all right. Okay, no, I'm just, you know, you were heading towards the board. Hey, why don't you read your fucking story? I will, I got it. Uh, T.O. hitting a 4.43 and a 4.4440 at the age of 44, trying to make a resurgence into the NFL. We talked about it prior, I do believe, about T.O. coming back to the league. I believe in one of the prior yeah, podcasts. Yeah, we talked about it. Yeah. Now he's, like, posting videos, like, yo. So he's literally, like, okay, now he's showing what he can really do. He's actively, like, putting his shit out there, like, somebody's going to want me. Yeah. And, I mean, I don't know what the recording of most of the kids in the draft is, but if you're a wide receiver running a 4-4, you're a pretty quick receiver. Like, And it's not like it's a new rookie coming into the league where they're like, well, he's fast, but can he really play? I mean, T.O. kind of has a fucking reputation. Yeah, he's up there for Hall of Fame. He's... Hey, you know, ever heard of it? Yeah. Hall of Fame? Yeah, I'm going in there. Yeah, and he's and still... if you want me on your team, let's yeah, go. He's still trying to get out there. He's posting videos, workout resume. He's still in fantastic shape. He said he would love to play for two, three years still. So it'd be really cool if they put him as an option, even if it's just a free agency on like the next Madden game. Oh, I'd pick him up. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. Why the fuck not? Yeah. Uh, so that's pretty wild. Uh, has he done anything else other than just run his 40? Uh, not from what I've seen. I mean, he shows videos of like his workout regimen and obviously him catching some footballs and stuff like that. Didn't but... he put a thing out like back when he was still playing where he would do nothing but eat McDonald's? And yes, he did actually. And I actually talked about that because we always talked about my metabolism being so high, how I could eat like shit because I used to eat like three Jack in the Box Baconators and then nothing. I'd be, f- yeah, nothing would happen. I'd be fine. So. What he would do is, before his practice every day, he would go to McDonald's and he would have a McGriddle and hash browns. And then when he got out of it, 
he would go and have a Big Mac and large fries and a Coke and go home. Like, he would stop at the same McDonald's before and after practice, and they were like, how can you eat that every single day, the same meals that are awful for you and stay in the same shape? And he'd just go, I'm a legend. I'm like just, like, a freak like human I'm just the best. Yeah. I don't know. And I'm sure other than that, McDonald's, if you're at that point, like, when your body's trained to that point, like, yeah, he could sit there and eat that every day because his body literally uses those calories for a purpose, and I'm sure he's eating all kinds of other shit right. other than that, so it's not like, I mean, fuck, if you're like that, you can easily eat McDonald's again yeah. and not look like me. Right. So, right. Uh, one of the things I got is a big story right now is James Winston will be suspended for the first three games of the season for an allegation of him groping a female Uber driver in 2016. Uh, I didn't really want to get into the whole allegation and everything surrounding it, but what looks like is going to happen is old Ryan Fitzpatrick will be starting the first three games for the Buccaneers. Exciting! So the team has come out and said some of the players that were, or, or not players, but like coaching staff and stuff that was interviewed from the team said that they're not too worried about it. They feel like Fitzpatrick is a solid player and that there's really not a huge skill gap between the two of them, which is kind of wild because Fitzpatrick... You usually hear some negative things about him. You do, but he's also had a couple of good runs. Like, he had that yeah. season with the Jets where he kind of looked like someone who could lead a team, but the team wasn't good enough for him to get anywhere, so you didn't know where he'd land. But he had a lot of failures before then. Exactly. Now, the question will be, with those past failures, I mean, he's had a long season. Last year, he started three games, and he went two and one. Uh, this is going to Do you know who he be, played for? I, I don't. He played... Last year when he played? Yeah, when he went. He, pl- he played for the Bucks. Okay. Yeah, it was when he tore his ACL last year. Oh, okay. Step. And so he Fitzpatrick started for that, went 2-1. and one. This year he's actually kicking off the season with that, and he's playing three teams that won playoff games last year in the New Orleans Saints, the Philadelphia Eagles, which won the Super Bowl, and the Pittsburgh Steelers, who is always a challenge no matter who happens to be playing him. My question is, how do you think he will do? And if he does do well, do you think this might be a – chance you know Fitzpatrick is a seasoned veteran regardless of what his you know statistical record may show do you think that this will be a chance for Fitzpatrick to maybe earn himself a spot for the season or do you think it's pretty much guaranteed once Winston comes back he's going to be taking over that starting role the only way I see Fitzpatrick going ahead and staying in helm is if he wins all All three three games. games if he wins all three games I couldn't see a poll in him and I almost think it has to be like he's got to win all three games and and throw multiple touchdowns. It can't just be their running game beat them. For no, I get that, but like if you're down yeah. tight in the quarter and he is able to march you down the field and get it like at the end of the game, all say it, it does that. Say they only win by like three points every game, but he marches you down the field and he kicks the field goal on all three games. The reason you made it there is your quarterback gave you those rink dink nickel and dime passes, getting you down the field. He's able to move the team. So you think that's even going to do it? Now these are three games three big games so even if he is able to do it and they do that that would be a chance i feel like if that happens they're still gonna start winston but i feel like if they win decisively by like a touchdown or multiple points you know seven or more points each time that's gonna show i mean if you can win three games against former playoff contending victorious teams by over a touchdown and you have it was decisively a passing victory I mean, they got to look at that. I just think three in a row, he's the hot hand. You got to play your hot hand. You play it till he loses. And if you're going to open up and you're going to go three and no, you don't pull that guy and throw someone else in the mix. You let it go till he now loses. Now, you see that happen in the NHL all the time with hot goalies, though. Yeah, but that's a different sport. It's a whole different mentality. Really? Yes. So. Theirs are played in series, these are single games. So when Hasselbeck went five and oh. For the Colts, he went four and one. He went four and one. Yes, he lost his one game and then luck came back. I mean, four well, it was still actually a pretty good the start. end of the season, but how'd the rest of that season go after luck well, took over? They didn't make it to the playoffs. I mean, four and one's a pretty good start. No, it was a good just... start. No, I mean, he wasn't doing. He actually statistically did better than Andrew Luck that season, and that's why. You know, I understand the whole hot hand theory, and I personally and I agree would with I it. would agree with if you got a hot hand, somebody winning it, play the guy winning it. It'll just be interesting to see. You know, they've kind of stood by Winston through his on field and off field antics. Antics, I guess you'd say, and so it'll be interesting to see if they really do stick by his side. And do you agree? 
that there isn't much of a skill difference between Jameis Winston and Ryan Fitzpatrick. I feel like the you could say that only because Fitzpatrick hasn't had like an elite, lustrous career, and Winston is so early that you haven't seen what he can really do. So it's hard to really... You're almost comparing apples to oranges at this point. I wouldn't say that they're skilled the same. I would say they're their mindsets are different but they're relatively on the same pace because ryan fitzpatrick is more of a seasoned veteran who had more experience with things so he can handle the things that you would want your quarterback of the past three years to be able to handle at this point well winston might not have an experience fitz has but what fitz might not have in sheer talent winston might have right that's kind of counterbalance yes so i believe what they're saying is they're on the same scale of player they might not have the same skill or the same mindset but whatever one counters the other the other one counters him gotcha did you have any stories that other stories that you looked up for the nfl this week i did i had one on des bryant uh he was on instagram and he had just a picture up looking at like clothes or something and i was i don't even remember what it was because i laughed so hard at the the comments. chirping that was going on yeah the chirping so des bryant posted something on instagram and me myself i was scrolling through the comments reading it and this one dude named robbie gonzalez put shouldn't you be looking for a team bro and out of the like twenty thousand comments that this picture got this is one that des replied to and he put the last problem i have is finding a team I'm in a world you will never understand. And I enjoy that because he is telling that dude he's a fucking pheasant and he doesn't know anything about what it's like being a millionaire NFL player and people's opinions on players individually doesn't mean shit to them. You will never be able to fathom what might be a problem to me because my life is so much better than Yeah, you just... Telling me to look for... That dude's already a millionaire. Telling me, shouldn't you be looking for a team? Well, really, I could retire right now. So it it doesn't matter. And to me, like, obviously... He's made way more money than I have or might yeah. potentially make. Who knows? But, I mean, you can't just, like, lay down and die like that, though. I mean, if you... No, were, it's a pretty... Like, if you turn around and hit me with that, like, you would never understand, I would just straight back go by, like, you're right, I don't understand the world of unemployment because I've always been able to find a job. Right, and that's a good chirp to give back, but then he'd go, yeah, but I also have $22 million in my bank. Be like, well, and then you be like, all right, well, I guess. Are you're you looking right. for money or are you looking for a job? Like, right. Regardless of how much money you have, still doesn't change the fact that no NFL team wants to hire you. You're not get good. Cause yeah, get good. L2 so. football. L2 play football. Uh, my other story is based on one of your boys, Adam Vinatieri, kicker for the Colts. Hey. Uh, it's well known that Adam Vinatieri wants to stick around as long as he can and basically break a bunch of records. He wants to be the oldest player in NFL history, correct? I do believe he does, and the oldest one is 48. 48. Uh, He is currently 45 years old, entering his 23rd season, so he doesn't have that long to go if he can stay healthy. George Blanda, who was the oldest player in NFL, played until he was 48. Uh, Also, I found this to be a fun fact. Morton Anderson, a.k.a. The Great Dane, is second on that list and played for the Falcons. That's really funny since you have a great Dane and your favorite team is the Atlanta Falcons. So this is obviously before my time of becoming an NFL fan, but I'm definitely going to have to do some reading up on this guy because absolutely he definitely has a lot of reasons for me. It's kind of weird too, like he's probably some odd linky because years ago, you know, this is what going on our fourth, fifth year since you made me pick a team. Uh, I think we're going on to the third year since you picked a team. We watched no, a year I... together where you didn't pick one. You watched yeah, the know. season, and now you're on your third year of being an Atlanta fan. So you've watched for I feel for like years. it's been longer than that. I don't think so. Because this is entering my... This is going to be my fifth fantasy Because I know your first season of being an Atlanta fan, they made it to the Super Bowl. Yeah. And that was two years ago. Okay. So this is my... Th- I'm entering my third year? You're entering your fourth. fourth. You've done... Three. I've had three years under my yes. belt. I'm entering my fourth. So that's why, you, that's why you're in your fifth year of fantasy, because yeah. you did the year where you didn't, pick, didn't a pick a team. You did the three with... Atlanta. Atlanta, and, and now, now this is going this. into your fifth. Okay. Yes. So that's where all that stems from, and so I just thought it was kind of crazy like i obviously picked the falcons because vic was a big fan of mine yep. when i played madden back in the day and i just liked kind of you know how we got it that signed Victor's jersey up on the we wall we do i'm staring at it right now it's definitely one of the best gifts i've ever gotten from oh, from anybody like, especially from you but uh 
But no, I thought it was cool. That guy, the Great Dane, also has that record. But he actually holds on to the points and kicks record. If Adam Vinatieri can kick seven field goals this year, he'll pass Anderson for the most kicked in a career. And if he can score 58 points by the time he retires, he will capture the most points of a kicker. I think he won't retire until he gets that. You think? Because he Unless has said an injury he, happens. He has said he wants that record. Yeah, and he has. And he also did say, though, that he's just taking things year by year right now, yeah. making sure he feels healthy. He's only on one-year contract. And, yeah, exactly. And even if the Colts, I mean, it would be cool to see the Colts hold on to him between them and the Patriots. They've had him for a while. Uh, but it would be, even if the Colts don't hold on to him, I mean, it's at a military. Somebody will sign. Yeah, someone's gonna someone's get him. I mean, any team that has is having a like a kicker issue, or they just want somebody who they know is gonna be able to kick it within the thirty or forty for yeah. ease, then they're gonna pick up Adam Benatari. You have your young guy come in and just do kickoffs and develop his leg, while Adam Benatari just puts him through the upright for you. Absolutely simple. Uh, and so that was pretty cool. All those sources, of course, are by ESPN.com. Uh, so those were the stories that I was able to find. Next, we will enter some of our NHL stuff that we happen to look up. What kind of NHL stories do you I am talk so about? disappointed. I am so obstruct. I only watched the NF or the NHL draft for one reason, and it was to see Keith Kachuk's son get drafted. And I was so hoping the Blues would get him. He didn't make it that he far. He didn't make it that far, and he was taken by the Senators. And I literally couldn't tell you what happened next because I turned my TV off and went to bed because I was so upset. Oh, damn. As soon as they said his well, name... you knew he wasn't going to make it that I far. wanted him, though, so bad. Well, I wanted it so cool. bad. I was just hoping something would happen for him to... Or even the Blues to trade up. Like, I, I don't know how it works. Just somebody puts out a rumor and be like, yo, he raped somebody. And yeah. Like, Whoa. Then, oh. Oh. We're not drafted. And then the Blues are like, yo, yeah, we'll we take you. Too. Rape happens all the all time the in time. St. Louis. Yeah, we got we you. We got you. So that's what I wanted. It didn't happen. I was extremely shook. And I, even though like I knew it wasn't going to happen, my hopes still got that high. Yeah. And it didn't even work out. And I was just a pissy little 14-year-old boy fucking kicking Fuck, my doors shut. Whatever it is. Yeah, I know. I was so upset. Uh, I didn't look too much, you know, with when a sport's not actually on, it's hard for me to find some of these stories. It's a little easier with NFL. For some reason, I've just really fallen in love with it that it's much It's a season more. that never stops. Yeah, and so I've really fallen in love with it in the past couple of years since you got me into fantasy so much because there are that many things that can apply to fantasy, like things that happen in the off season that can affect who you're going to be drafting the next year. And so... Uh, I did think it was kind of cool, though. Trotz, who ended up leaving the Washington Capitals. Former, the head coach? Yeah, the head coach, leaving his Stanley Cup champions and is being picked up by the New York Islanders. So that'll be a pretty good fit for him. He's got some great players over there. Uh, they're really trying to turn that team around right now. The only thing that I don't like about it is that might give John Travera a reason to stay in New York and help turn that team around with a new head coach. And as a Blues fan that is just struggling for some amazing players and we just want a motherfucking cup, I really want to see that guy come to St. Louis. We just want to get some 30 goal scorers up in here. Yeah, I mean, Tarasenko needs some help. We got the playmakers. We got plenty of playmakers. And we need some people that can just get the goal scoring done when the goal scored. We got Shin and Schwartz who do things, but I think we just need some more help. I, even dividing the lines with them, I think, would help. And I don't even think you need to do that. Tarasenko needs another person on his line. You put another deadly person on that line with him to where they have to back off of Tarasenko a little bit or Tavares is just going to put it in, it's going to make that just a killer scoring line. Yeah. And so that's what I would like to see come to St. Louis. So, hey, Tavares, I know you're not going to listen to this podcast, but motherfucker, come to St. Louis. I'll yeah. buy your jersey now. Right now. We'll get it custom made, and we'll be wearing it before you're even here. Uh, my other thing I got for the NHL is the Canes. Did you see that they re their uniforms? I, I heard about it. I haven't got to see the uniforms They have a yet. new logo, and it's of two f- flags, and it's the warning flags for hurricanes oh okay and in it it actually has the two flags and like you know how like a flag ripples in the wind yeah the ripple is actually the outline of their state oh that's pretty cool so it's actually pretty neat it's like a matte black jersey with are they nice... keeping the colors it, they're black and red and they have a new secondary logo and that's the one that's actually on their chest now very cool so i'm gonna i was just you know checking that out real quick so yeah there it is right there that flag one this one right here yeah, that one right there. It's pretty awesome. It makes for good radio when we're talking about this one? what it, Yep, that's what's going to oh. be on their jersey. I actually think it's the double one right there. This one right here? Okay. Oh, no. 
down because it outlines their state. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha, that's gotcha. like the outline of the state, actually. Oh, cool. It's a pretty interesting... And those are like the warning flags for there's a hurricane coming in. Interesting. So that's why they use those. It's a pretty neat thing. Uh, I just I like thought it. it was interesting and pretty neat. And cool. I think they're actually going to be up to date like it's one of the coolest uniforms on ice next season. I'll be interested. I think they're going to look like the most badass team. Like, I like the Knights with the black and the red and the gold. I like yeah. how they did it. But with their black and red, I think they're going to make like the Devils look way out of date and yeah. look not nearly as chipper as they are like they're gonna look real clean with their new yeah setup i think i really like the blue on the hockey teams i feel like the blues the maple leafs and the lightning has some of the sickest jerseys yeah the blues looks like a classic jersey yeah and i like that about the blues i hope they keep that like traditional like when they were like in the years like what was it 2003 to 2007 when they had the stripes on the side with the mm-hmm. all blue I didn't like those very yeah. much I really like I just wish they'd go with their winter classic jerseys and just go back to that I love that light blue color yeah the light blue color is a good that one I wish sick. they would make that like a forever alternative option yeah I would really like that but now that we've kind of wrapped up the sports section of the podcast it's time to get into some segments and the first segment we are going to be getting into will be the wow story of the week wow 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 wow, wow. 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 All right, so this week, my last star of the week, I looked this one up when we were at the bar not long ago. An Australian artist for some dark arts festival, whatever the fuck that is, buried himself under a road for three days. Okay. It was an Australian performance artist, buried himself in a steel container under some road for 72 hours as part of... A so-called dark arts festival and was released on Sunday I think this was last Sunday so over the last weekend he did this uh, his name is Mike Parr he was 73 years old Holy fuck. who does creative endeavors typically exploring the physical limits limits and was entombed in a shipping container on Thursday and it was resealed above him He had oxygen pumped into the container. He also had access to water, reading and writing materials, a heater, and a distress button in case anything went wrong. He didn't eat any food, but he was equipped with a bucket for sanitary use. Uh, I guess when you're fucking in your 70s, you're just out of shit to fucking do, and you just hope doing crazy shit like this you'll die. Wait, how do you get buried under a road? Like, how, under a road, right? I guess m- maybe it was, like, a gravel road, so they dug it out and buried him in and then just piled everything back on top. And it said he had a bat, a bucket for sanitary? Shitty, yeah, it? so, like, did he sit and, like, get buried? It's like a mini shipping container, so he was, like, he could walk Oh, he was, okay, he was, like, in a, okay. wasn't, like, a coffin they buried Yeah, him okay, that makes which more sense. Which is kind of fucking, like, pussy to, like, if you're gonna do that, like, bury me in a coffin for three days and I'll come out. I don't know. That's a long time to be in a coffin. Three days. You'd probably run out of oxygen. No, they'd still have a way. They like a coffin-sized container to where all you can really do is like chill there for three days. Maybe give you like a few granola bars and a little thing of water. Yeah. So you survive. But I mean, this dude had writing materials and reading material. I mean, for three days, you could literally just take like a stack of books and just be like, for the next three days, I'm just gonna read and sleep. Fuck you! Give me a thirty pack. I'll last three days. Yeah. Uh, I mean, fuck. I don't need to eat. I'll just slam just get drunk ten every morning, and pass, pass the out the for out. another twelve yeah. hours, drink another ten, pass out for twelve. I hours. might throw up somewhere and piss a little bit, but that'd be about it. But another thing is, they said he did this to like represent some like suffering. Like, how does doing dumb shit like this represent? Like, this isn't doing dumb doing... shit. This is something to create a fucked up news story that some random ass podcast will talk about. Yeah, they're just trying to get some like low low budget like uh, what is it? Whenever you get promoted. Press. Just yeah. some low-budget press from some no-name podcast. Like, if I'm 73, the last thing I'm going to do is, like, yo, bury me underground. I'm going to be, like... If I, I'm 73 and getting buried underground, I better be because I'm dead. Yeah. Like... <laughs> I ain't trying to fuck around anymore. And if I'm, when I'm 73, I hope I've done enough with my life where I could be like, dude, we're just chilling. Yeah, I'm not doing anything. When I'm 73, no one will see me. I will be sitting in my house doing not shit because I ain't got shit to do at 73. That's fucking silly. 
Like, what do you think he took down there? To you think he just took porn with him and just jerked it for three? No, because he's seventy three. His dick don't work. Didn't say he couldn't take Viagra with him. Ah, uh, that's true. But they'd probably inf- they'd probably put in there that he brought that with him. Did it not give like a full list? of No, things it he didn't. Brought? It just said reading materials and writing materials, a heater, a distress button, and a shit bucket, or a cum bucket. Yeah, cum bucket for sure. No, at 73, I mean, if I was going to be down there, what would I read? I don't know. I might, like, read whatever How the kids How to survive read. in a shipping container underground. For, for three, three days? days? For dummies. For dummies. Yeah. They have but a for dummies book for everything. They do. There's so many of them. I don't know. I guess I'd bring, like, some literature or, like, uh, play some music like the kids are listening to. So maybe you can, like, get a little bit in t- yourself. Yeah, a like, bit. get a little bit in touch with what's above you, I guess. I think the whole thing's fucking wild. No, I that I would never. You're not gonna see that out here. Like in America, no one's gonna do that because that shit's one stupid, two probably extremely expensive to bury yourself under a road. Be like, yo, can I tear up your road so you can bury me under it? Yeah. Be like, no, you fucking old weirdo, get the fuck out of here. Right. Admit him to a psychiatric ward. He's obviously gone into dementia. I'm surprised they remembered him because I forget about my grandparents all the time. Yeah, like what if they were just like. <laughs> Oh, fuck, we buried a dude, like, six weeks ago. Oh, my God, I couldn't even imagine. I mean, he's got the distress button you said down there, so maybe yeah. he had a way to, like, contact them. You think he had, like, a timer down there so he knew, like, when three days were up? Possibly. And then all the people that were supposed to know about him. They did a better job than I would. I would yeah, no, he would have died if I was in charge of that, what for sure. What kind of fucked up stories have you found out? Well, it's not really fucked up. I just think it's kind of interesting because Friday on June 21st was actually Queen Elizabeth's birthday. She is 92. She was born in 1926. And for my wild stories, I just have some things that happened in 1926 when she was born that I just think are really interesting. Before you get into them, I'll tell you right now, Queen Elizabeth ain't burying herself under no fucking buildings. No fucking fucking way. She's like, I ain't doing that fucking weirdo pleb shit. I'm the fucking queen. Let me tell you what kind of shit has happened since I was born. Right. So everything I have here are things... I have six things, and they were all things that happened the year she was born. Okay. Now, is this throughout history or the exact year she was born? The exact year she was born. Okay. So all this... these things happened. Okay. So in 1926, Fidel Castro, Marilyn Monroe, and Hugh Hefner were all also born. Which is wild, because I don't feel like all those people are that old. Yeah, you, you they don't are. realize how much time has passed. Wow. Because Marilyn Monroe died young. Yeah. And is Fidel Castro still alive? No, I don't. I don't think so. so either. And then Hugh Hefner just died. Yeah. And he was 91. But I didn't think he I didn't think he was even that old. Like, yeah. I didn't oh, think he was he's old. old. I know he was, like, older, but fuck, 91, that's getting up there. Mm-hmm. Germany and the Soviet Union signed the Treaty of Berlin. Okay. So, you heard about that in history class, so that's fucking old. Or maybe you haven't, because they're changing history books now. They are, which Have is... Have you seen that one picture on the internet where it was like, when, we the, when the settlers came over, the Indians just moved out kindly to make room. Yeah, like, really, we beat the fuck out of them and killed and raped up. and pillaged, and it was a bad time. Yeah, no, I realize they change things for that for, like, censorship for kids nowadays. They don't want them to know of the bad How shit we used up to do. We were. Yeah. Uh, Henry Ford announces the 40-hour work week. Thanks, Henry. I appreciate my weekends. Yes, the weekends are nice. Uh, the eight-hour days are good. Uh, but it's crazy to think that something that was instituted in 1926 is still the standard that's held up today in 2018. It is probably wild. It is kind of wild to think that almost 100 years... 40-hour work week has been, like, the standard. Yeah. And I actually believe it's Australia that made their standard work week 30 hours. I know different countries around the world have made it different. I know some of them have, like, uh, like four-day, six-hour work week and yeah. stuff like that. And I know over in, like, Spain and stuff, they actually split their days in half where you get up and you leave and then you come back and, like, lunch midday is their big family time. And then they go back for a few hours, which I could not fucking do. No, I do. couldn't like, do that. I wouldn't want to leave work and go back four hours later. Yeah, That'd be they annoying. go do more shit again. Yeah, I couldn't do that. Uh, escape artist... Famous entertainer Harry Houdini dies at the age of 52, was in 1926, so I believe that's when he did the barrel over Niagara Falls and died. Isn't that when he died? I don't know. I didn't. I think. Not a huge Harry Houdini follower. Oh, well, 
I believe that's what happened, and that was in 1926 when he finally died. Uh, the very first Kelly Blue Book was published in 1926. For anyone who knows anything about buying or selling cars, you when you try to find out how much a car is worth, you look up on Kelly Book bluebook.com find out what it's worth and then you can kind of give yourself an estimate of what you're doing the very first time that was introduced was in 1926 i also thought that was interesting because that's been around since i was born i just thought that was a thing that came with cars i just thought that was something that was normal always i didn't realize it was like a, a different company that had come up with it yeah it was just basically at some point in time somebody's like hey we're going to make a company where we tell people what their shit's worth, and that's what they try to get for it. Mm -hmm. And this one I added because I thought it was kind of funny to see where different nations were on our progress on, uh, like, technology. technology and, like, where we're moving forward. In the United States, Robert Goddard invented liquid fuel rockets, while over in Norway, Eric Rothman invented aerial spray. Aerosol? Aerosol, yes. Aerosol spray. So we're inventing rockets and they're inventing hairspray. So now here's what I'm saying. What has been more useful overall budget-wise? Rocket fuel or aerosol spray? I would say to like the development of the world, like rockets are a better invention, but as far as... And you gotta think, rockets are so fucking expensive, but think about how much but think shit about is in aerosol that's cans what I'm that saying. is sold every day. Everything is made out of aerosol cans. Yo, shut the fuck up! Jesus Christ. Yeah, that dog wouldn't stop barking. I know it wouldn't stop barking, but I was not ready for you to do that. I shut him up, didn't I? Well, you did. But back to what we were talking about. But yeah, no, you have so many rockets that are made every year through time. And they're way more expensive than aerosol products. But think of how many people in America alone buy just an air freshener and it has aerosol spray You got in one it. right here. That's all aerosol. These, I know for a fact, since I've lived in my apartment, I bought like 40 of these. Yeah. And so you think more money gets spent. I'd like to f somehow find a set on that. Like how much money is spent annually on rockets or aerosol or spray. aerosol products? I bet the dude that invented aerosol is doing pretty good. I or bet. His family is. Yeah. So he's I probably dead. I just couldn't even... Th like, how many things have aerosol? Like, you have these, you have anything that blows air for, like, cleaning computers, because aerosol is that condensed thing. Anything for spray, spray glue adhesive for flooring. Like flooring that we use. Yeah. I mean, we use aerosol products for a lot of shit. Bug sprays. Bug sprays are all aerosol. Lo like, suntan lotion. Yeah. Hair sprays. Yeah. Fucking bug killers. Yeah. Cleaners. Mm-hmm. Anything like that Lubricants. is... Lubricants. Yeah, it's all Lots aerosol spray. So. There's a, they're both probably doing pretty good. Yeah. Both smarter brains than we got. Anybody listening, go ahead and look up what what has made more money since 1926 to now. Aerosol sprays or rocket fuel. And I will give you an Inside the Pocket t-shirt. Yep. And while you're looking that up, we are going to go ahead and jump into our next segment, which would be what we would do if we were president. If I was president, I'd get elected on Friday. Assassin did it on Saturday, buried on Sunday. If I was president, if I was president. All right, Austin, if you were the leader of our free world, what are some of the things that you would fucking do? Not shit, bud. Oh. I would do absolutely nothing. I would come in. I would be a face. I would come in and I'd literally, my, my campaign, my whole campaign would be, you motherfuckers are still alive. We're going to just keep doing we, what we're doing. We're doing what we're doing. We have problems. I realize that. But the problems that we're facing, if there's not a controversy, maybe you guys will stop attacking each other at your throats. Just live. Be who you are. Be who you want to be. Go by the laws that we have already in place. And I'm just going to sit back and relax. And we'll see where it pans out in the future. Even if I end up getting a second term. But say it works. Say I go in there and I do nothing. Nothing changes. There's no negative impact there. Sometimes you got to give some time to see how things work out because we change shit so often it's hard to even tell if shit's working or not working. That's why I'm not going to do shit. I'm going to see if what we have in place works. Wait the eight years if I get two terms. And if there is huge problems arising, those will fall on the next motherfucker because I already told you guys I wasn't doing shit. We're going to see where it goes off of what was left. I'm just here to be the face and have somebody in office. Might actually teach the rest of the world how to figure out some problems. Might because, benefit people by not doing yeah, anything. While I'm there not doing anything and other people can realize like what it would be like to have a president who literally does not give a fuck is like 
Because, like, I know people say, like, Trump probably doesn't give a fuck, but there's also people still on his side. I mean, there's, you know, he does the things he does, and there's... Everybody always disagrees with presidents constantly. But if you're not doing anything, can they really disagree or agree with you? They could be like, oh, you're not doing anything. Why do we even elect you? Because you're alive. You guys have been doing this for a while now. For 200 years, America's been fine. So basically, you just be there. You go to all these summits and these meetings and stuff, and people are like, so blah, blah, blah. We're going to be like figure it out like yeah, let's see you guys out. figure it out yeah. we always fucking do this yeah so that's why I'm just gonna just not let anyone do it see where it goes so you're a president whose campaign is we're just gonna keep it moving yeah we're just gonna keep doing what we're doing we're just not I've I don't care like I care about people and I want people to be happy but I think one of the biggest problems is that when people are trying to make room for change it pins people against each other true so because that's one thing I talk about too when people are like you know, you'll have an opinion and blah, 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 and why can't we figure this out, whether it's gun rights or, you know, whatever the fuck it is. It's like, you realize most countries are smaller than a lot of our just states. States, yeah. And so it's hard to get as many people that we have in America to all literally agree on something. Yeah, and that's not going to happen. I mean, really, the only things you can get everyone to agree on are, like, rape, murder, and stealing, even though that shit still happens constantly. We all genuinely agree that And then we argue about things. how to stop it. Yes. We argue about, like, the problem with it. Well, defend yourself, I guess. Yeah. Or protect your shit better. I don't know how to do it. Don't know how to do it. Well, if I were president, and this is based on just kind of the kind of conversations that we usually have and how things normally tend to go. If you've ever been at a party, you can agree with this. Uh, all meetings between, like, Congress or Senate or when the president sits down, he's got to talk to people. All this shit's going to be done after having a few drinks. We all got to have a few drinks before we have these meetings because that's when the truth comes out. When you loosen up. You loosen up a little bit. The truth starts flying a little easier. You take down your barriers. You open yourself up. And that's when things just really happen. I can't tell you how many just deep conversations I've had late night, you know, fucking wasted just at a campfire. Or but just you say things about. you didn't mean or you regret? I usually don't. I, I mean, I'm not a really out there person. I'm not saying I've never done anything I didn't regret, but when it comes to like literally when you're talking about an issue or opinions or something like that, they've usually just came out pretty much the way I meant to say it. It might remove, you know, in that setting, it's not like a party where somebody, you know, Congress isn't trying to, like, fuck each other yeah. get with, you know, weird shit like that. But if it's literally like, we got an issue, we need to figure out, we're all going to have some shots, and we're going to sit down, and we are literally going to talk about this and figure shit out. I think every meeting should start with everybody doing an Irish car bomb. Irish car bomb, and then every subject that they got to go to, they have a drink or they have a shot or something like that. You have just to keep a- everybody loose. Everybody's so fucking, everybody's so focused on the image and the perceptions and and political correctness and shit like that. Have a couple beers, kick the fuck back, and let's just solve this shit in a relaxed, civilized manner. And maybe we'll actually come up with some good ideas. Yeah, no, I'm I'm on board with that because that's when you have like your most intimate and real talks with people is when you have a few drinks in you, like I mean, just the like shit you, you I, might refrain from saying because you're like, oh, how's this person gonna judge me? Have a few drinks, you're not gonna worry about how people are judging you. Just throw it out there, and then maybe it might be something that if you were sober, you might jump to conclusion about. But after you're having some drinks, you're like, oh, I could totally see your side of things. Right, I think you're gonna have a more chill environment overall. Yeah, and so that's my thing. I should be in those meetings all the time because I drink frequently yeah. so i could be on top of those meetings. so it's like all right guys we're having a meeting we're gonna have some drinks we'll get this shit done and then we'll just have ourselves a day all right cuz oh great day in america oh, i like that all right well now that we've uh came up with an idea for what we would do if we were running this free country let's come up with some ideas that other people might have on how things might not be ex- exactly how they seem we're gonna get into some conspiracy theories All right. 
let's go. Before we get into the conspiracy theory, I want to let you guys know what kind of beer we're drinking for the beer review at the end of the show. It is O'Fallon Gold. It is a handcrafted, crisp, clean, and golden ale brought to you by O'Fallon Brewery and, as always, sponsored by Barrels Tap House in O'Fallon, Missouri at the corner of Highway N and Highway K. They got 109 beers on tap, awesome people, and awesome food. And while we're drinking this beer, we're going to enjoy a little vape Which is also brought to you by who, Austin? The Vape Shop in Lake St. Louis, right off of, uh, fucking, what's the highway? 70. You get off 70 and you go on to Lake St. Louis Boulevard. It is right there to the left-hand side, right next to El Magway. And they are soon going to have a new location opening up off Mexico Road in O'Fallon, Missouri. So be sure and check those guys out if you like to vape. Tell them the guys from Inside the Pocket sent you, and they're going to treat you real good. So as we get into our conspiracy theories, Austin... Uh, what kind of things have you noticed that might not be as they really appear to be? Well, I tell you what, I didn't listen to him a whole bunch, but he's that rapper who just got shot the other day, that XXX uh, Tent Action or Tent... Extension or something. Extension, however you say Shows it. Shows how much we are... That's what I'm saying. I don't really know him. I have nothing against the rapper for anyone who's coming at me for coming up with a conspiracy theory about him. But anywho... We're impartial. There, yes, I have, on a team. I have no opinion on it. So, there's video evidence shown of him getting shot and then him yeah, being taken away and it was saying that he was pronounced dead. However, he has a face tattoo on the side that is shown in the video that is not there in the video. So, there's pictures of him with a face tattoo that the guy in the video doesn't have. Correct. There's also no blood seen in the no, video. I, I noticed that too. bullet, like, through the car. There's no shots, no broken glass, no anything. There's no blood or anything on the guy. This artist has faked his death once before over a reveal for a music video. Hmm. And people thought then he had died by suicide, but it was faked for his music video, like I just said. And I think that's weird. However, also, Drake had a song, and he put some lyrics in it, and I'm going to say the lyrics for you. And it's SMS triple X. That's the only time I ever shoot below the neck. Why you keep on shooting if you know that N-word's dead? Hmm. Now, people are starting to say that that was him. The triple X is him referring to this guy. This guy. Because there's three next X's before his name. However, Drake has said that that is not what it's about. I think this dude might be capitalizing on the fact that Drake made that song. He's trying to blackmail Drake? Or, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hit well, they, they had b- beef before, Drake yeah. and this rapper. They had some, like, stuff like that before, and then this came out, so maybe the dude's, like, hopping on it. Or he's actually dead. Like, if he's actually dead, this is going to be really, like, eh, well, you're wrong. But what if some crazy guy comes out kind of like the uh, John Lennon killing and say, like, uh, this song told me to kill me. R- right, something weird like that. Like the dude However, read, they also, in the rye. They also said like, that they had a white SUV with a man in a red mask and another rapper who owns a white SUV and wears a red mask when he goes out yeah was out in the same town that the guy was shot in and i saw a video there's a video on live like right now of what they believe was his killer like mocking him and stuff talking about like you should have heard what this guy was saying when he was begging for his life and blah 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 and there has been an arrest made on it yeah but i have seen all these things that maybe this is like leading up to something or he faked his death to get out of some sort of spot but he was also pronounced dead by police by actual officials he was pronounced dead so if it does end up being like fake can you fucking trust your police anymore? There's going to be a lot of questions. That, right. Like, so who pronounced him dead? The other part about it is the triple X guy said, if I die, Drake did it on a Instagram and Snapchat post. He made two videos talking about if he died, Drake's the one who killed him. And I actually saw some of those videos where he was talking about, like, if I die, this is what I want all my shit to mean and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. So it's kind of wild that all this stuff comes out and then and it then happens. And then dies. And so either he knew it was coming and Drake's a straight killer, like the new Suge Knight. Yeah. Or it's all just a ploy to either like frame Drake or maybe it's like you said, all just a stunt leading up to something. Yeah. So a lot I, of questions. Yeah. Think. There's just a lot of questions. And that's why I, I thought the conspiracy theory on it, because if he's actually dead, rest in peace. Sorry about questioning it. But it's weird for you to call out all this stuff and then you happen to die and then 
just everything leading up to it to be where it's at and now people questioning it and the video showing and there's no face tattoos and then they're like no well blood. is that him there's no blood he looks like he's just asleep in the car also the name of his new album is no pulse and in the video the dude is looking at him and goes there's no pulse so there's a lot of weird so shit. there's a lot of even though there's no pulse is a pretty common thing to say about somebody, somebody who's dead, dead but that was also happened to be the name of his last album that it came out yeah so there's just a lot of things that happen to correlate together if it is just a coincidence there's a shit ton of them going on yes that's wild well my conspiracy kind of leads to some recent news that came out about the president we're getting a motherfucking space force fuck yeah let's go halo go into fucking space we're gonna defend this shit it actually remember reminded me of one of the last call of duties one of the was it ghosts or one of the black ops but the game starts where you're like this son and his brother and you're talking to the dad and all these bombs start oh and you had the shooting in space yeah and i was like yo that that reminds me of that game where literally you might have these countries having warfare over satellites and weapons and space and stuff that can be controlled but the big conspiracy theory that i was reading is that they believe maybe donald trump just got reading done reading some of the alien files Oh, some of the hidden stuff the that was exposed to him now that he's the president about extraterrestrials or maybe we contacted some aliens and maybe somebody straight alpha Trump the way he does like other people and they were like oh you want to talk about buttons motherfucker we got buttons from other planets we'll glass the whole earth you got no fucking idea what's coming your way and so now he's like yo guys we, uh, we need to get in space yeah we need to get in space and get on top of that shit and so are we about to be attacked by aliens uh, the Space Force is being enacted. Is this something really to defend America from other countries in space? Or is this something that he's trying to get people like out there defense. like a global defense? But you would think if he did that, he'd be trying to set something up with other countries maybe. Well, like he did just thing. do the whole peace treaty with North Korea and everything. Maybe he's squashing like the big beefs we have because maybe there's a bigger beef to be held. It, very true. Maybe he ended it his uh, thing with them and maybe he's even went I mean people bash him because he doesn't believe in global warming but maybe he's come up there and be like yo we got aliens coming and Canada doesn't believe it and some of these other countries don't believe it and that's why he's having beef with them but some of the other countries that are like yeah we'll fucking bomb people we don't care he's like yo calm down yo chill we got well, other people trying to bomb got us other from people other planets coming you need to save that trigger happy attitude for the motherfuckers that are coming from outside and so maybe that's why he's trying to get all that enacted uh like but part of that also like so if we have aliens come we've talked about this before you know you might have aliens that are so advanced in their technology that they've developed means of transportation but they haven't dedicated any of that to weaponry right to weaponry so a lot of people talk about like yeah if aliens come we're just gonna get wiped out one of the big things I've always seen is like look at when Americans came over to America what happened to the people that were there first didn't work out so well no just like if somebody came to us it might not work out so well for us exactly might not but part of it also you know part of me also thinks like you know maybe they've they come from a planet where they have no need for violence so they've dedicated everything towards science and now they're able to travel the universe and then they come here and then we just fuck them up which i think would be a horrible move by us to just well yeah yeah and and that's why i worry about like what we would do when aliens literally first come however i will say if aliens come that would be the first step in uniting the world because we would no longer be seen as individual races we would all be like yeah we're earthlings yeah we're earthlings and so we are all here together this is us yeah we need to get our shit together but part of that also wonders like so say we do do it and like we end up having a war in space and stuff can you imagine like ufos coming by and we're just like fucking each other up in space and they're like the fuck's going on like it's one thing to be on the planet having warfare and maybe aliens have came to earth and seen it but like for an alien to be cruising by and their fucking ufo and we have people in space doing warfare they're like the heck the fuck is going on is going on these people are retarded yeah be like yo we're in a bad part of the universe right here do you think earth do you think earth Earth will be the east st louis of the universe Oh, no. They're going to be like, yo, don't go over there. Those people are fucking crazy. All they do is kill each other and argue about shit. Yeah, they just fight over land and so, the shit we all share. Yeah, and like literally we might be the fucking ghetto of the universe. Well, people probably won't come over here and fuck with us then. No, but that's fucked up. And the crazy thing is, 
like maybe Donald Trump realizes that. You know, part of it, you, you never really know how the thing is. I'm a firm believer that the president's just a face, kind of like how you yeah. talked about you would be if you were president. Yeah. So I feel like it's just a face, and there's other people way higher up that have more pull, and it's all secret societies and shit that are pulling the strings. But, like, it kind of makes you wonder with the Space Force being enacted, like, are we getting closer and closer to... Being inter... Intergalactical. Yeah. Like meeting some other aliens and shit. And that would be this wild. Thing I hope we, in my lifetime, we make contacts with aliens. Because, like, I don't think that it would be a negative impact. I think it would really only be positive. Unless we were attacked. If we were attacked or something, obviously it would be negative. But if, like, we confirmed, yeah, we know of other aliens, I think earth would only have a positive impact at first people would freak out but i think like i said earlier i think it would help us realize that we are human beings we're not individual countries and different types of people sure we're different races and come from different backgrounds but we're all here at the same place yeah we all need to find a way to make this shit yeah, work. there's other places out there with intelligent life i think that would be a plus for us actually if we found like significant like factual evidence of other living creatures and that would be a cool idea too so if aliens do come and they teach us stuff and we start branching out so now earth is going to move on to mars or we're actually going to send col we're a new colonization of another planet i feel like it shouldn't be like earth is going to colonize that planet or russia is going to colonize that planet because that'll just become more planetary warfare i feel like when the time comes and they're taking candidates you should literally take, like, two men and two women or, like, couples of, like, almost every nation of the world and be like, everybody is going to go here as a fucking combined team, as Team Earth. No more team country. Yeah. And so, and that would force everybody to integrate, to yeah. just survive. Yeah, they'd be their one thing up there. And it makes you wonder if they would survive, because I've also read things, too, where it's like, you know, you could take 100 people and put them on an island, and within a few weeks, one person will be in charge of the whole island, and everybody else will just be, like, doing what they're supposed to do and not questioning it, because that's just human nature, like, right. and blah, blah, blah. So it'd be interesting to take that kind of group of people, like a few people from every nationality from all over the world yeah. and stuff like that, and see how that they hopefully would integrate and be yeah. successful is yeah, what I would hope. Yeah, that's what you would hope people do. That's what you would think people do. Yeah, but it's kind of wild how, like, you would think we could figure that out as a people and we still struggle with we it We still today. struggle with it today. Like, yeah. we can't get people together to be like, hey guys, can we literally just fucking stop? Yeah, can we like, just with, be with the technology that we have now and the internet and everything else, like, it, it would it really be that hard to just put it out there and be like, okay guys, we're fucking stopping. And then get all the countries in the world to literally go through and sweep, like, third world countries and stuff like that, be like, time out. The whole world's gonna fucking go on pause and we're just gonna start fixing shit. Yeah, like that, and I know everybody says everything's worth money, well, not if everybody says, no, we're all just going to do this. Yeah, like if literally the whole world... And all, now, you know how hard it would be to organize 8 billion people? Pretty fucking hard. It'd be, and not, that's where I'm saying you're going to have your complications with it, yeah. of course, because you're never going to get everybody to be on par with everything. But the comparison is basically, you would hope you could send a team of people with a few people from every nationality of the world to go to another planet and colonize it and work together and create a peaceful inhabitants of that planet, and maybe those people can come back at some point and teach the rest of our fucked up world like guys. Yeah, literally this is what we need to I look at it like this if you had nothing if you had literally nothing say you're homeless say you're not even in the city you're from we're from St. Louis say I'm homeless in Minnesota let's throw you just me, made let's your throw way throw me up in Minnesota I'm homeless I have nothing I would hope someone regardless of what they look like and who they are would lend a hand to help me get back on my feet yeah like I wouldn't care what you are I don't give a shit I just want to live like everybody should just live yeah like people are too worried about social like hierarchy and racist views none of that really matters end game yeah like and i'm not one of those people that say somebody that has worked hard and earned a fortune should have to give their fortune away no no they've worked hard for the right to do whatever the fuck they want but 
at the same time... I've given business cards to homeless people. Yeah. Yo, apply here. And there this. are plenty of people, and I'm not saying everybody does deserve things. There's plenty of people that are homeless that don't give a fuck and they're not going to work regardless of what you try to do to help them there's going to be people that just don't care and eventually you would hope that we can get rid of enough of those people or they would die off and more optimistic and progressive people would start to be created that would turn the world around negative light but sometimes that's what you need yeah Uh, once in a while you gotta burn the crops for new ones to grow yeah and once in a while you're gonna have that with humanity yeah probably eventually so an odd tangent that it kind of ran off onto but hey good conversation uh the next thing we're going to do is a segment that we did from last week that we really enjoyed doing uh we got a couple more submissions from some awesome people and we are going to get into our tinder talks yikes Okay, to kick off today's Tinder Talks, we got a couple little combos that were sent to us. The first one was by a good friend of mine, Shauna, who I used to know from the Halo days, so thank you, Shauna. Uh, She's a streamer on Twitch, uh, Miss Heartbreak, so be sure and check her out. Um, She sent me this awesome one. It's very short, but uh, Mr. Jake, it's just his, this is his icebreaker, just opened up with this. Hi, Shauna. I'm looking for an oral playmate someone to trade oral sex with oh so typically when i'm like talking to a chick i'm not actually gonna just refer to it as oral sex yeah i'm gonna be like yo blow me blow me or like (laughs) yo let me fucking munch that box girl yeah but uh sorry that was our dog he was munching some box over here uh let me just go ahead and start out with uh, normally when I talk to someone, oral sex isn't the first thing I go ahead and mention. I do know, like, for most people, when we see a girl and you're interested in her, you're like, I want to be inside that. But you're not sure how to jump into conversation. Don't start with, I want to trade amazing oral sex with you. Yeah. <laughs> like, regardless of what your skill set may be, this dude may be a terrific fucking vagina muncher, but you don't just straight up, yo, um,. I want to eat your vagina. No, you... That's not going to work. have a little conversation. I'm not much of a small talker either, but I don't know. Maybe just say, hey, I think you're really great looking. Let's go on a date. Yeah. Like, maybe let me get to know you. Swoo her through it and then munch that box later. Yeah, get her out. Feed that girl some good food because bitches love food. And then maybe she'll be like, you know what? You look like a guy that could really eat my fucking pussy. Let's go back to my place. But you don't just straight up open with that. Now she doesn't even know what you're into. Now you've already told her your skill set. She expects you to be good. So You can't just give someone the punchline. Yeah, you can't do that. You can't just come out with Sally has no arms for anyone yeah. who knows. Stan. And that's not, not even the punchline. You can't just open up with foreplay. You got the beginning, the middle, and the end. You can't just hit somebody with the climax builder before you've introduced... Com- characters and you can't just fucking start off with the fucking climax of the event you gotta ease your way through it there is a process fucking there is an order of operations here that this guy isn't following this is this is relationship math son but it's no reason to call the police over late pizza because this dude could save himself he could this could be a guy that say you know he could hit her back look i didn't mean to jump to i definitely came off real strong i'm not looking for a solid relationship but I obviously think you are a woman that looks great. Of an attractive value to me. Maybe let's go out, hang out sometime, see if you enjoy my company, and we'll see what happens. It's going to take a long ladder to get back up to where you can get somebody to talk to you after that, but definitely possible. Yeah, no, it's definitely possible, but uh, for for the future, and like I said, if I were going to open up like that, I would straight up be like, hey... You look like you have a delicious vagina. You should let me come over there and... Put some saute on that bitch. Yeah, you should just let me come take care of that for you. Not, uh, excuse me, ma'am, but you look like somebody I would like to exchange some oral sexual favors for. Now you just sound like a fucking weirdo and a goddamn nerd. You're a fucking nerd. And so if you're gonna fucking be creepy, at least alpha that shit. Yeah. Because that's the only way you might slide something like that. Like by. saying oral sex seems so like somebody who's not good at oral sex. Like yeah. that's <laughs> Yeah, like exactly. To like, come at me and be like, I wanna give you oral sex, I beg absolutely not. But if somebody's like, I'm gonna give you some bomb ass head, 
yeah, no, I'm down for that. That's like a much better sounding phrase. Yeah, like you know? I got Parkinson's in this tongue, girl, and I'm trying to take care of that ass. But like, <laughs> let's shake things up. Let's a bit. shake things up a bit. But you don't just, uh, excuse me, babe. Uh, I looked at your picture, and my penis became erect, and I would love to exchange oral sexual favors. Nope, not gonna work. Not only is it fucking weird to open up with that, but now you sound like a goddamn dweeb. Uh, the next one that I had was from a friend, and this is from Tattoos Are Sexy, 89. All right. So not only do you have a weak-ass fucking, uh, fucking Tinder profile name, but... And goddamn, the screenshot she sent me, she's got 99 plus messages. So hopefully we get some more. What a rough life for a girl. Yeah, like I cannot imagine getting that many messages and them all probably being like fucked up creepo messages. And dicks. And just dicks. Yeah, just dicks. She's out of 99 plus, probably 99 plus of those are just fucking dicks. I do have a question for you. Yeah. Talking about dicks, have you ever sent a dick pic? I've sent a dick pic upon request. I have, I have well. never blasted a random uh, casual conversation. An unsolicited Yo, here's my dick cop. pic. Yeah. Never done that. Yeah. yeah. Never it's never always been a consensual dick pic. Yep, I get that. And and I've even felt weird doing that. Like, yeah, oh, like, absolutely. This is kind of fun. I can't believe she wants to fucking just see my fucking cock, but... Now, I do have another question. This is going to be weird because my answer might differ from yours. All right. After you took that dick pic... Did you masturbate afterwards and finish? Because you you weren't flaccid when you took that picture. No, that's you can't. Flat. Yeah, you, yeah, you can't just hard. be like, oh, here's So did you go ahead and go masturbate afterwards, or did you just let it die down? I gotta think. I think maybe a time or two it actually led to them coming over. Oh, no shit. So well, you I must was, have a good dick, yeah, but... and so it actually was like, you know, I did its job. Proud of you, little guy. But, <laughs> um... I don't know. I don't think there's ever been a time where I, like, that's what I was doing. But, I don't know. I can't really say. It's been a long time since that kind of event even right. occurred for me. And so, I can't really remember if that's, but I'm not, if that is your plan of action, I'm not judging. Because, I mean, you got the, you got it locked and loaded. You might as well put it to good yeah, use. Yeah, you might as well get your shot off. Yeah, and so. Uh, You're putting one in the chamber and not firing the trigger. Yeah, you That's don't, just a wasted bullet. Yeah, you don't load it up without intention to fire. Yeah. And so, uh, but yeah, Tattoos Are Sexy 89 sent Brienne a message. Would you watch a sexy guy, J.O.? So, I'm assuming J.O. means jack jerk off. off. Yeah. Okay. And so, I, you know, that was a little weird for me because I've never received the shorthand of jerk off from anybody. Nope, before. J.O. is definitely an odd but J.O. is definitely going to be jerking off. And so, her response was laughing my ass off. Also shorthand. Yeah. And then, immediately, a barrage of messages. Would you like a big fat dick? Would you like to choke and gag on a big fat dick? Do you have a can of shaving cream? Well. So a very wild. So for him to bring up the shaving cream and then, well, before that saying, would you like to choke on a fat cock and then bring up shaving cream? I assume he's going to compare the thickness of a bottle of shaving cream to his cock. That makes sense. That would be where I would take it. But it's also maybe he's so fucked up, too, because it's like, you know, and he's really putting it into perspective for it because it's like. Would you like a big fat cock? She might be thinking, oh, I, you know, a big fat cock wouldn't be bad. Would you like to choke? Well, well no, I don't want to choke on it. I'd like to enjoy like a, it. Yeah, that sounds like you a know, rough time. It's like, I mean, if somebody came up and was like, would you like a delicious cheesecake? Well, sure, I'd like it. Would you, you like to choke, choke on it? it? <laughs> well, what the fuck? No, I just want to enjoy it. Like, why do I got to suffer because of this? And so, that. and so that's kind of wild. And then after that... Do you have a can of shaving cream? And he does have a laughing face emoji. And so I, I think you're right. He was really going for that comparison of a can of shaving cream. But part of me also thinks it's almost like overcompensation. Where like, if you're really trying to compare your cock to a can of fucking Barbasol shaving cream, you're overcompensating. That or the only other thing I could think of is maybe he was going to ask her to like spray it on her and like do pictures like with stuff covered like what girls do with whipped cream and the dudes lick it off yeah maybe he was thinking of a white foamy substance to cover herself with for pictures. why wouldn't you just ask for like do you have some whipped cream cool whip? yeah but i don't know who's gonna eat it he's not there so it's a waste yeah, of whipped but, cream yeah but it's a waste of shaving cream you can rub that shit on your body and shave your body off 
I mean, maybe, maybe, but I mean, what if she literally just shaved? And so well, he's not, that's not in his realm of knowledge. He's just guessing. That's why he's asking. Just do you, do have, you a have a can of shaving, of shaving cream? cream? And she obviously responded. Well, not obviously, but what she responded was with just, "You are a fucking mess," and that was the end of the conversation. But once again, if you're trying to hit up a chick on a dating website. You don't, these are things you don't open with. Like, these are not openers. Like I said, these are hard closers. These are hard closers. Hard closers. And I'm not saying a hard, wild, left field closer isn't going to work for you. You know, some of the openers that I got were like, oh, something about a tattoo that I had. Or, you know, if I saw a girl that I like, I might just be like, you know, I'd notice something in a picture and bring it up to her or mention, you know, just something. But... And literally, some of those may have led to, like, okay, this is the intention that I have. Are you game for this? And right. some of them, there's plenty of girls out there that just want to have fun. Yeah. They're not all trying to just yeah. get into hard, solid relationships, guys. There's plenty of girls out there that just want to fucking have a good time. Just play your but, fucking cards right. Don't be a fucking But you gotta play weirdo. the fucking cards right. You can't just fucking go all in and throw down your pocket aces on the fucking yeah. first before the fucking flop has been coming out full of fucko trying to get it in like on via text it's not gonna work out yeah you gotta show that you got a little game cause chicks aren't just trying to fucking throw down on every cock that fucking cause there's cocks everywhere look around look around anywhere there's plenty of dudes around you they got cocks yeah and typically a girl can jump on just about any cock she wants most of the time even if they aren't even that good looking there's gonna be a cock around that's willing to let them jump on it. Right. And so you have to make your cock appealing to jump on. And it doesn't happen by just going straight out and mentioning your fat dick. (laughs) Kind of comparison it to shaving cream bottles. Yeah. You gotta, because... What is he? You think he carries one around and he, like, sets it on the table at a bar and goes, that's how thick my dick is. That's what my dick looks like if anybody's interested. You think that's what he does? Like, that's his opener He might. I mean, as weird as these fucking messages are. Well, he's behind a keyboard. I'm just curious if he's that confident or... I doubt it. I think it's one of those things in real life. You would be extremely insecure because you don't just go around comparing your dick to a fucking can of shaving Which, if his dick's as thick as a can of craving cream, or shaving cream... Not craving shame, shaving cream. Uh, kudos. You, you kind of sound like, uh, what's his name? God damn it! I'm trying to think of the name now. Sean Connery. Sean if he was talking Connery. and a, like having a gay conversation, he'd kind of be like, "I'm craving some shaman." Okay, <laughs> that's, that's a, a weird away. thing to put together, but all right. I mean, you're the one that said craving shame. I understand that, but I was also stumbling on my words, and then I immediately corrected it. Let's you're a all terrible keep that podcaster. Over. I am. Well, I'm terrible at a lot of things that I try. But that's all right. We got people listening, and we got sponsors, and we haven't even launched yet, so suck our dicks. Yeah, we're doing things without our actually Our big, doing fat, anything. shaving cream can-like dicks. Yes, yeah, suck those for so, everyone. Just so. to remember now, anyone who hears it, our cocks are the same size of shaving cream bottles so just so you know but unfortunately for you female listeners we're both taken now so you're just gonna have to use your imagination but those are the only tinder talks we have from today we appreciate shauna and brian for sending us those awesome screenshots if you know somebody who might have small ones even if your girl's gotten some fucked up messages that she showed you in the past or you know some girls that have gotten some fucked up messages Hit us up, shoot us a DM on Facebook, uh, hit us up on Twitter or Instagram. Our handles are all on our Facebook page. And if we end up picking yours, we might send you a t-shirt or something cool. Yeah, We'll feature you on the episode, give you some shout outs, tag you on some Facebook posts. Uh, whatever we end up doing, we appreciate it. So be sure and send those in. Not all just for girls. If guys, if you got weird messages from girls, feel free to send those in too. Those are just as interesting. We haven't got one yet, and I'd love to totally talk about one. And normally guys are way more fucked up when it comes to random messages on dating sites so that's typically what we end up expecting to see but if you found yourself some crazy ass bitch that's sending you some wild posts we would love to talk about that too because we like to think that us guys aren't the only fucked up people in the world even though we probably are most likely we are pretty fucked up but coming off of that gavin we're gonna go ahead and hop right into i believe is our nice beer review i'm not me for paving long road I ain't cut out to climb highline poles, but I'm pretty good at drinking beer. 
All right, so we got this beer from a distributor from O'Fallon Brewery themselves. So shout out to O'Fallon Brewery. We really appreciate it. Hopefully we can uh, hook something up in the near future. Sponsorship, you know, just throwing that out there. But this is the O'Fallon Gold Handcrafted Crispy Clean Golden Ale, an all-natural 12 fluids out, fluid ounce bottle. Uh, they love beer over at O'Fallon, and this is a nice, classy-looking beer. It's got the gold labels and everything. What do you think of the taste, Austin? Taste is actually up on par with me. I actually haven't had this one before. I've had a lot of O'Fallon's beers. This one actually goes down a lot easier, more like a domestic beer. It actually feels like a standard drink rather than, like, one you would pair with something. Yeah. This actually tastes like one that you would drink. Like, you would buy a six-pack and go through all six in the day. Oh, yeah, it's definitely not that heavy. It doesn't taste soup it's not like super light like a light beer. right no it's got a heavy body in us too yeah but it's not something that's gonna fill you up super fast no, it's not like a, a stout heavy it's it's heavier than like a bud light or a budweiser or a coors light definitely heavier it does than have those. a similar taste but it almost has the thickness of a lager yeah almost not almost, quite not quite a little lighter yeah. But it's not a light beer. No, for it's sure. definitely not a light beer. It, it's good, and I like the bottle. I also like O'Fallon's bottle build in all. It's very sleek, and it comes to the top, and it has the big O right on the yeah. top. I'm a fan of that. They got the logo blown into the glass. Yeah, I like that a lot. I think the label is what's catchy about it. Is it's the front's extremely matte black with the gold that like comes around all the way around the bottle with the brown. And right beer to the, take to a wedding reception. Yes. Or like. Uh, like a wedding reception or if you're at some sort of networking thing and you're trying to be classy or something or some sort of black tie event or something like that. So a very nice, classy, not too light, not too strong flavored. You're going to be able to enjoy a bunch of these throughout the night, but it's not something that's going to fill you up instantly. Yeah, and I'm having a struggle finding the alcohol content. I actually don't think it's listed on the bottle itself. It might be listed on the pack, but we don't have a pack with us currently. So I can't give you that information right off the front, but if I were to guess, it's going to be between somewhere between a four point three and a five point three. Yeah, it's it can't be too much. It tastes like, like I said, the taste is similar to a typical domestic, but it's not as light as your Bud Light or anything like that, or a Coors Light or anything like that. But uh, definitely a great tasting beer, something that you can take to a nice party if you're wanting to just look fucking nice while you're yeah. enjoying a good beer. No, it's a good one to hold in the hand. And as always, this was brought to you by Barrels Brew House. Tap House. Tap House. We're getting it down. I'm getting New it New name change. They just had their grand opening last weekend. So if you are looking to have a great time and enjoy some great beers, head on over to Barrels Tap House and have yourself one of their 109 beers that are on tap. Surely there's one in that bar for you to try. And let them know that the guys from Inside the Pocket sent you. They are our first official sponsor, and we love those people over there, and they love us. So and if you mention us, they're going to treat you well. And go ahead and pick up one of the Inside the Pocket t-shirts that they're selling at their bar right now. $25, and it's a great-looking shirt. You can rep the brand. Do it for the brand, Do as we like brand. to say. Pat McAfee's. A signature little line that he likes to use and help us out we're hoping to make this big we're hoping to bring a name to st louis and we're hoping you guys enjoy the podcast so far and we hope you guys have a great week and weekend so whenever you happen to listen to it enjoy the rest of however much time you have left until the next episode yay inside the pocket of clown Smile, turn into frown.